Today, we're talking about massage and a holistic approach to coaching. And I'm thrilled for this episode because today's guest is someone that I've had the pleasure of knowing for probably seven or eight years now. And uh, and I've witnessed his growth and he's such an inspiration when it comes to changing career and following your passion to start a business and doing the work to grow both personally and professionally to become a leader in your field. And he's passionate about helping people. He's got a diverse range of life experiences and tools and techniques that he uses to help his clients unwind their muscles and get deep relaxation. And he gets raving reviews from his clients, myself included. And so welcome to the coaching circle, Craig Collins-Wells. It's great to be here. Great. Thank you so much, Craig. Like, you know, it was funny when I was writing this and I was just thinking about when we met, um, you know, I think it was 2016. It was like, I think it was 2016 when we first met and um, and you'd already started your business. How long were you in there? How long had you started then? I reckon it may have been 18 months, nearly two years. Yeah. So you're quite new still, really, in the scope of business when we think about business being a long game. And, uh, and you had your set up there, which was all really great. Um. But I remember, I remember because I was, I can't even remember how I come across you, but I remember meeting you and you were like, I don't do networking. <laughs> and, uh, and you know, that's, that's so funny now because now, you know, we're both involved in networking groups and everything else, which, uh, which is a testament to all your growth and what you've done. But what I would love to come back to is just asking Craig, you know, what, what actually led you? Because I would, I love asking my clients this because I know that people listen to this are often people who are coaches or starting their own business or or they might even be your clients. I'm sure there's a lot of your clients that want to listen to this. And it's always really interesting to just hear where people started and, you know, what got you into massage, starting a business and why is what you do important to you? Originally, it all started with a therapist I had. I had a massage therapist that used to make me feel amazing. And she did something very similar to what I do. She then became the, started a college down here in Adelaide called Aminia Natural Therapies. And starting with her doing my remedial, my wife Amanda did the aromatherapy diploma. We both started doing these courses. And all of a sudden, there was a component to do with business. And before I knew it, I had an ABN, I had a business name and it's like, okay, now you have a business. And it's like, what? So it was almost by accident, but the real crux of it was I wanted to help people feel good. I remember saying that to my massage therapist, how can I make people feel the way I do right now? And that's where it all began. And through my own, I guess, adversity, I had different injuries over the years and it got me out of a 19-year journey in butchering, which is what I started when I left school. And mm. I basically had a numb hand. And a lot of the doctors, the chiropractors, the physios, even my massage therapist, they were working on points that I know myself now weren't actually helping. They were actually just putting a Band-Aid on it, which would then, the pain would increase and come back. But it's those experiences that help me with my clients because I totally understand what they're going through. And between doing martial arts for another 12 years involved there as well. I had several injuries there too, almost sound accident prone, but these experiences have helped me with my clients because of, I can generally feel where a problem starts and everything is connected. So understanding the way the body works, understanding the way everything is actually attached to something else and knowing where to look for something after experiencing it myself has been a real, real, it's been an addition to my journey. Yeah. Oh, uh, Craig, look, I, and you've done so many amazing things. And I think, you know, like I, I'm always inspired by that, the fact, you know, you went into this career like butchering for 19 years and then, you know, like obviously you'd well we know because I know you've trained NLP because you've learned it with me <laughs> um but we know so much about how the unconscious mind works with the body right like if you're out of alignment with what you're doing that the body can create pain essentially can't it 
if saying like this yeah, isn't good it, for you or you shouldn't be doing this my body drew the line in the sand and it actually said to me it's like well if you're not going to leave you're not going to get out of this industry i'm going to make you and so it did it made it so it wasn't safe for me to work and it was that internal conversation i wasn't listening to that was one of my blockers with a lot of things and through nlp i had a lot of different shifts not only a fear of sharks disappeared through a phobia at least um, but it's just a lot of those processes where I thought I wasn't good enough. Who was I to ever be doing something like this? And um, I even listened to someone when they said to me, it was going to take five years to build up a client list. And I looked at them as somebody that I respected. So I believe what they say. So I, I actually put that in almost in like a goal in five years, I was going to have a full client list. And I had no reason to do that. <laughs> Um, it's knowing what I know now it's through learning NLP without limiting decisions, limiting beliefs, you can actually go forward instead of holding yourself back like an anchor. Ah, uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think it's such an important thing, you know, like, you know, I'm so passionate about people learning NLP, obviously, um, for anyone, especially anyone in business, just for understanding language and how we create our reality because we receive so many suggestions especially from people who we look up to or who we see as an authority and we'll take it on board as a suggestion without even questioning it and I think you know it's like you know it's great to see that you have grown you know a full client list and your business is doing really really well now Craig but yeah you think about that right like how how could that have potentially held you back or, or whatever else. Um, so yeah, it's really important stuff, but we'll get more into this NLP and how you use it in your massage in a minute, because I really like your approach and the understanding that you have. But you know, mm. one of the things that I've always thought ever since I knew you were a butcher, I, to me, I go, well, of course you're so good at massage and what you do because butchering you, you, you understand how even they're not human bodies, you know, how like, muscles and things and whatever go together has that do you say that do you feel oh, like that's given absolutely. you an insight into how you're so good at what you do with remedial massage I treat without my glasses so I actually lose one of my senses my sense of sight it it's everything's fuzzy and um, I have to really concentrate to actually see so when I put my hands on someone I can actually see under the skin with by feel and when I first started in college they used to have I had to learn a whole new language of what the muscles were because I knew them as something totally different and to sort of look at something and said oh this was the silver side no yeah. Craig it's not <laughs> the silver side. and I was like okay so I had to then learn a lot of well, basically they're almost Latin terms but the terminology through the body and not all my clients need to hear that either they actually mm. like to know where the muscle is like even if you actually if not I refer to the muscle by actually putting some a little bit of compression on it. Just I don't like hurting people either. My theory, even with the muscles, is if you hurt someone, anything you've released is now tight again. So it sort of is counterproductive in my book. But mm -hmm. being able to see that, you can actually see how things connect. And looking at my, like even looking at my muscle chart I've got here, and thinking about the old soul, you know, the knee bones connected to the hip bone, the hip bone connected, and it is so true. It's not only with the muscles; it's with the um, skeletal system as well and I don't I'm not trained in any cracking or any work with the bones but the muscle structure has so much control you take all the muscles off the body and the bones just collapse in a heap so the muscles have a lot of control in the way the body works and then the muscles remember how they work on a daily basis and what they need to do to support the structure as it goes up the body and so if there is something that's out of alignment or if there's a muscle that's too tight, something else then corresponds on the other side, which then tightens to take pressure off the other. And yeah. it's it's like a domino effect. Yeah. And I know like from my own personal experience, because I, I remember when you said that, like, I don't like, I don't hurt people or don't believe in hard massage. And I was so relieved because, you know, for years, I, I never got massages and when I did, like it was painful and I just couldn't work it out. I'm like, I don't know why people were getting massages. Like it's, to me, it wasn't fun at all, especially if in my calf muscles. Maybe my calf muscles are a bit tight. I'm not sure, but 
And I used to be like, I'd sit there and wince and go, oh, this is, you know, it's uncomfortable. I didn't get it. And then, um, you know, I remember when I first came and saw you and you were like, no, I don't believe in hurting people. And that's not how this works. But even when I said like, I don't know if I had things, usually it's probably to do with my hips or my shoulders or something like that are usually my spots. And you'd be like, oh yeah, this is this. I'll just like press here and release this thing. And then you should find that is better or something. And I'm just like, wow, it really is. That's amazing. And um, and I know even another lady that um, who's in a, in a networking group has said that after having a session with you, um, it was like she didn't even need to go to see the chiropractor or something or like she has these ongoing issues but after seeing you she was just like that has been the best treatment I've ever had like I've had the most rel relief that's lasted the most time um and I think yeah it's a real it's it's fascinating to me it's fascinating and I don't like I said I always think I always bring it back to uh Craig's a butcher like he knows how all this stuff connects <laughs> But of course, you've done a whole lot more training other than that, Craig. Oh, I have. I mm. have. I think the first um, the first person, I, well, I wasn't quite qualified, I met was Matthew Greenwood. And he is, is basically trained as American Indian shaman. And he taught me a lot about ego. And I never forget to him. He said to me, what do you want to do? And I said, I want to save the world. I want to actually help everyone. And he, he, he put his hands on my shoulders and says, Craig, you can only help one person at a time. And that has a flow on effect. Otherwise, you will burn out and we're going to lose you too. And I never forget those words. And he, he always gave the best hugs too. But mm. it's like, even then I went and I've learned Reiki. I did Reiki one and two. And my instructor even said to me, unless you're wanting to teach, um, you actually have enough information in one and two to do everything you want. And I was so blessed to have him as a lecturer. That was Michael Barton. And then I've done acupuncture, not acupuncture, but I've done acupressure. So I'm not a great lover of needles, even though I'm in the over over 200s of blood donations. I'm yeah, you've had a few needles, needles haven't you? Those regular blood donations. That's another thing that's amazing. Yep. Yeah, if you've ever yeah, needed a blood transfusion, you've most likely had some of Craig Collins' I've been part of it somewhere. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but especially if you're, if you're sort of looking at O positive, and I always think, well, that's what I am, I'm, Oh, positive. Oh, That's so me. positive. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. So but acupressure. It's... So what's the difference between acupressure and acupuncture? Well, acupuncture, you're using needles to go in. It's it's also known as um, another version of it is dry needling. Oh, yes. Um, where acupuncture is actually a diploma, which um, I guess I'm more, I'm more favoured towards if I'm sending clients to and referring off and it's basically going in deep into the body with the needles at different well different depths but it's connecting on a deeper level and then it's leaving them there to actually activate and sometimes they even put electrodes on with the acup acupuncture whereas acupressure it's using your fingers to get on in different points of the body to work on the meridians to unlock something in your foot may unlock something behind your ear and yeah, it's amazing. Wow. It's just full systems through your body. And that's why even reflexology can be so good for your body because there's so much on our feet with the right pressure at the right place. It can actually work through the whole entire body. Yeah. Wow. It, it's so fascinating because it's like the, the, your feet. I've heard that you've got all these things on your feet that relate to your whole body. Um, when I spoke to Joyce Piper, she was talking about all the things on your face that relate to things on your whole body. I, I'm like, yeah. I'm not a big fan of people okay. touching my feet. Supposed to, hands I'm, as well. I'm, oh, and your hands, yeah. I, I'm a Pisces. I'm supposed to like people touching my feet, but I'm not I'm not a massive fan, and I have to say. Not everybody does. There is people, that, you know, I have clients that don't like their feet being touched, and even being ticklish is another one. That's generally, um, you'll find it it's, can be a trauma, um, like even from mm. being tickled, um, or it's just you don't like people touching you for one reason or another, and, I have yeah. even come across that within my in my treatment room and a lady sat there and said, I really want a treatment, but I don't want you to touch me. I was like, okay, fair enough, lay down. For massage. And yeah, and what it was, I ended up doing a Reiki treatment on her, an energy treatment. And it was becoming, letting her actually become com comfortable with me and for her to be open for the treatment that was going to be able to be helping her and that's what this this place is all about. I'm I'm about making people feel comfortable, and it's in that environment 
that change can happen unless mm. you're actually I guess I I try to sync with them as well and become as close to them as I can mm. and so when they actually come into my room before they even go in there I try and connect with them and make them feel comfortable so when they do go in um it is it is a very vulnerable and a personal thing so it's about making sure someone feels comfortable and covered and making sure that everything that they want is what they get yeah and and mm, I think that's so really it's... important Craig because I know you know if you've never been for massage before and like I said but I never used to go for massage very often when I was young like I could count on one hand the amount of times I'd had a massage yeah. before I was like I don't know 40 um like I, it was always like a bit awkward. It's just like, what what am I supposed to like wear or what are you supposed to do? Or like, how, you know, get I getting undressed in front of people and like, you know, all these kinds of things that you, you think about. Um, but I think, you know, if you were to say to someone who was coming in for their first massage, what are the key things that you think people, most people appreciate knowing to put them at ease? If they've never had a treatment before, it's just nice to know that when they come in, they're filling out a form, which gives me a bit of a landmark or an idea on who they are and where their pain is or whether whether they're just coming in to try and actually turn their mind off, which I do take people through like a guided meditation while they're on the table. I get them to visualize different things, but I try and explain a little bit of that as well. And also just the actual setup, If even if I'm talking to someone on the phone, I'll say you'll come in. Um, you, it's it is about them. Basically, the treatment is entirely about them. It's not about me. I'm just there to help facilitate their treatment to get them to a place where they want to be. So whether that be oil or no oil, whether it be fully clothed or just down to underwear, but then they also know that they're covered with towels. I have draping towels, probably more than some people use. Because I've always thought being male, I want to be that, I want to be more careful, I guess, is one of the ways of looking at it and more respectful because being, if a towel slips and it, for me, that's, it's devastating. <laughs> I don't want that to happen. So I want someone to be comfortable on the table and get their full experience from a treatment where they walk out feeling like they're amazing, feeling on cloud nine. Yeah. Yeah. And I really, and all of that, that is helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's, I get such that sense from you, Craig, because I know as soon as whenever I've gone in with you or even, you know, your wife, Amanda, I've never felt uncomfortable at all. It's always been very relaxed and easy and simple and explained to what you need to do and, and all those kinds of things. And you give privacy, obviously, to get dressed or undressed or whatever you want to do and yeah, all that kind so. of stuff. Um. So, yeah, so that's really great. And I, I think, you know, the other thing, Craig, and what I like about your approach, and this is what we're talking about being very holistic, is that, um, you know, I think you guys to think, oh, you'd only get a massage just because, like, maybe you've been doing something and you've strained some muscles or, mm. or whatever else. But what are the actual causes or, or reasons that people need to come and have massage for? Well, you still have people that come in with injuries. Then the injury could be, but there was a gentleman this morning that had shoulder injuries. Now that shoulder is from a buildup and apparently it's been building up for about 18 months. Now, had have come in after even six months, it would have been something a lot I call maintenance instead of hard work and giving people the knowledge of how they can actually work on themselves. So it's not just that hard work when they come in, it is just getting from middle ground, from just starting to feel that pain back to living life again. And it could be someone's coming in just to actually experience how to unwind and how to actually stop thinking or being able mm. to turn the day off and be able to lay on, on a table with, listen, I generally have American Indian music playing. So they sit back, relax, and I get them to think also about where they could possibly be, whether they're down at the beach or whether they're in a forest or they could be anywhere. And that, that actually relates back to I have a green door and that green door is for everybody. And as soon as you come in here, that green door becomes your anchor point for wherever you're not here. And if you feel a twinge or a pain or just feeling a bit uptight or even feeling a little bit stressed, think of the green door, then it reminds you of how you felt 
laying on my table behind the green door, feeling like they did then, it yeah. brings back from that anchor. Yet again, is there a, is there a shake, and Steve, shake and Stephen song or something that talks about a green door? There a green is door. one of my clients yeah. sent it to me. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> every time like, you say green door, I'm like, I'm going, I'm like, is it shake, shake and Stevens, shake and Stevens? I don't know. It is. Yeah, yeah. and uh, yeah, that's <laughs> funny. But um, but it's a nice anchor. But so so it could be it that is. people have got injuries. It could be that you know maybe they've overdone it in a garden or something, or it could be yeah. like stress release. Yes, very much so. Yeah, yeah, and it's not so much only um, having, like if you spend too much time in the garden, understanding the key triggers that you know something is about to happen and this, being able to listen to your body is such a big thing because when you're actually, I get my clients to do a lot of breathing and I teach them um, something I learned in martial arts through my instructor and it's the breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, but counting in and then counting out and mm -hmm. it becomes very euphoric. And so as my clients are thinking about what their body is doing and closing their eyes and doing almost like an X-ray of their body and their muscles, they sort of being able to have that internal conversation. Sometimes you can actually fix yourself by talking to your own muscles and talking to your body and especially being able to reason with your mind. Because as we know, the subconscious or the unconscious mind has such control of everything we do. Mm. And so when you say something, even in my on my table, I correct people with their language. If they're starting to sound like they're trying to be negative or things aren't going to work or this may not happen, I said, well, let's not say that in here because those we don't talk like that in here. And it changes to the positive effect. And yeah, it most of the time the subconscious will actually pick up on that. And it's, oh, there's been a change. And even I have a mirror on the inside of my door. And when I, I say to people, did you notice that thing on the back of the door? And they say, oh, what, the mirror? I said, but who was in it? And I often like people to see their reflection. It's not so much that they see themselves. It's more to see that person they need to look after. Because mm -hmm. if they can look after that person they see, it's going to work both physically and emotionally. Mm -hmm. And it just gives them that extra extra buzz because they know they can actually give that person a wink or a say hello to that person, or even if you only do it in your head. Yeah, <laughs> making good sunshine. Um, yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, and it's, but you know. it's, it's such a powerful thing, though, because I, I think, you know, obviously I teach, like I said, NLP, hypnosis. I was just teaching hypnosis the other day. And that body, that mind-body connection is so powerful. And I think that's one of the things that people don't realize. It's like literally what you're saying to yourself affects the health of your body. And I, I had this, much. I had a brilliant experience of this. And I know you've met my mum before, Craig, but the other yeah. weekend when I was teaching hypnosis, because I was teaching online, my mum could join us. So my mum learned oh, hypnosis okay. with me. And uh, <laughs> anyway, I was speaking to her on the weekend and she said, oh, no, I've, I've had a bit of a cold during the week. And she goes, oh, but I'm getting better. She goes, I, I, hip my, I hypnotized myself and visualized myself healing and that I was getting better and telling myself that I was going to be fine. And, um, and I'm, I swear yeah. I'm getting better quicker. And, uh, and it's so powerful, right? It sure. It so is. Yeah. And being able to see, um, like I have people come in, in and see me that do bodybuilding. I have uh, martial artists. I have different fighters and different things and being able to guide them even through the principles of positive thinking. And even um, like walking into the ring and actually looking, out, stopping in the middle of the ring, right in the middle, looking over at your opponent and smiling at them and then keep walking. It's all part of your routine, but you've just psyched them out just from thinking about it. Yeah. And all that is, all you've done is smile. And it's being able to actually think of then, okay, all I'm asking of my body is to do what the memory of it is doing and mm. understanding if I stretch understanding how the body the principle that the body work even how the joints work and yeah. so that in the mind you can see things happening but then I guess even from like when we're doing goal setting I when my mar I did my martial art when we were doing a technique you would think of the last thing that you do because your body already knows how to get there mm. so you think of the last thing then boom it's done yeah yeah, so you've got to think about yourself being well and relaxed and moving easily and being healthy and all those kinds of things, right? Absolutely. Yeah.
I, and I think that's that's what's so powerful about your approach, Craig, because you're not only do you have a like a really deep insight and understanding into literally how does the body go together and connect and all those kinds of things and move, but you like you said, you're also a Reiki master, so you understand energy and how energy flows you through the to. the body. Yeah. Um, you're also, there's all these other acupressure and things that you've done. Um, and I'm sure there's other body work type stuff. You do something with the cranial sacral therapy. Is cranial sacral. Yeah. Which is, yep. what's that about? Basically, that's from, basically there's another rhythm in the body. And Dr. Upledger uh, was one of the original founders and he was actually in a, in a surgery where he was meant to hold on with these clamps onto somebody's, uh, the flesh that comes down right on the spinal, above the spinal cord. You were supposed to hold it still while they got rid of some calcium buildup on the vertebrae. And he couldn't hold it still because there was this rhythm that was actually running backwards and forwards. And the oh. other doctors like, hold it still. He goes, but I'm trying. And they realized that there's another rhythm in our body. It's not just um, the blood flowing around from the pumping of the heart. Our lungs are pushing oxygen into our blood as we're actually pulling it in. The lymphatic system only works if the muscles move. And so this is another rhythm. And we get told that our skull is fused. Now, if you ask doctors and even chiropractors, um, they will actually tell you that the skull is fused. But being fused together like this, so um, blood vessels can actually get through into the skull and you have something... Um, your fluid that's protecting your brain, it actually gets in there. If you've had a knock to your skull, what happens is sometimes you might get a small crease, but also you'll find the skull then hits the back of your head. And so your the actual brain, your brain will, it's almost like it enlarges or it gets inflamed. And mm -hmm. so that's when the body starts going in panic. Whereas cranial sacral um, techniques can actually loosen the skull and it's almost like it goes like this your hands might not move but it feels like it's going like this mm. and it's, it is amazing even stretching of the you know the muscles that are supporting the brain or supporting the base of the skull and the base of your pelvis and the base of the spine and it's like this drag that goes one way then the other it's just yeah incredible. and, and of course so that's gentle. where our whole nervous system's tied into right and i've seen those I've seen those pictures of like if you just had the nervous system and it's like it's pretty much a full body, isn't it? It like, runs everywhere. Yeah, like it's like a full a body of all the nerves and things that go, the whole nervous system of the whole body. Like it's incredible. And so, yeah, that's really, that's that's crazy stuff. Um, Even well, if you think like of that nervous good. system, like that nervous system is run through like electrical pulses. And if you mm. think of um, the computer, which is our brain, sends electrical pulses down to the different things to work. Mm. But it's the brain can't always be reactive quick enough to actually make changes and make things happen. So you get you hear about your gut gut responses, or I've got a gut feeling about something. And so we have different. Um, our body picks up ways to actually save us and help us. Yeah, and a lot of that can be through other. The other ways of those pulses getting to an area quicker. It's like yeah. putting your hand on the stove, and it's like if you waited for your brain, it might be too long, and your fingers could be burnt. But you know, well, your, that's your the body unconscious goes, fight, mind, fight. isn't it? Ooh, yeah, it sure is. It's only un that's the unconscious mind is the domain of the body. It has those intrinsic things that you don't have to consciously think about or consciously react to. Or yeah, yeah, amazing. Absolutely. So. So which leads into, that's the other level. So you understand all the, the connections, the nervous system, the energy, how that works through the body. But then also you've got that, um, the, the mind, the how does the mind work? The mind, the unconscious mind language and how that affects the body and the health of the body and the movement of the body. And yeah. And even having clients that have been through timeline therapy with me, even uh, one that I can talk about that had a real fear and had done all of this martial arts and done all these different training. But as soon as he got, um, as soon as he got angry, he got really afraid. And it's going back through his timeline, um, which is like our memory of where we've actually been through all of our life. He was able to see that he got both of those anger and fear at the same time. It was actually, yeah. And 
um, he got them in that order, anger, then fear. And whenever he got angry, he got he got scared. So he'd be in the middle of this argument with someone, he'd be getting really angry, then all of a sudden he'd get really scared. And he, he, want, he lost so many uh, battles with people because he was afraid. He'd get really angry and arc up, but then be afraid. And so when he actually learned that there was a change, he could do something different. And then he went back into the situation at work where the guys normally just razz him just to get him angry. And he was laughing at them. And mm. I remember his response was, I just can't believe I've done this for so long. You know, mm. and you, you, you know, it's just reason it was a couple of hours and it was gone, you yeah. know, and it's working through different processes, but it's amazing how this stuff all works. Yeah. And that's the holistic approach, right? That's essentially have taking a holistic approach where we look at every aspect of the human. I mean, even you're doing it from like the spiritual, the mental, the emotional and the physical. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Even in my room, sometimes I do choose, <laughs> I guess I choose who I share it with, but um, this place is very special and we, um, I feel there's energies in here that I, I can't see them, but I'm lucky that some of my clients actually do see and they tell me who's in here. And I believe that our guides actually help me with what I'm doing. Mm. And it's almost like a tap on the shoulder. It's like, get out of the way. It's my turn. <laughs> but it's, I actually ask for, a, um, if I'm working on someone and I can't seem to get something to shift, I ask for that divine presence to come down and give me a hand. And yeah. it's, whether it be just my own intervention and being able to step, step away from my own mind and to be able to work with something clearer or just energies, allowing extra energies to pump through. But I definitely feel there is extra. extra there, 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 well, there is. Room. And I think this is such a great conversation, Craig. And I'm so mm. glad you went there because I believe that we do all, we, we are a spiritual beings. We do all have yeah. the ability to connect to consciousness. I do the same thing when I'm coaching. Like I know when I'm coaching because yeah. I, I love coaching. I love training so much like it's when I get in flow it's why I love I love podcasting as well I like talking to people about this stuff and I like literally I'm there and and stuff just flows out of my mouth and I think geez I don't know where that come from that was pretty good stuff I should take note of that um but I think it's that when you know that you have that connection because we're not we're not humans with a connection to spirit we're spiritual beings in a human existence and I think so much of uh society and conditioning cuts us off from that um but it's still there if we're open to it and I think you know people like yourself and 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 especially when you're working when you know when you take that leap of faith to go and do the thing that you're passionate about and you dive into it and you immerse yourself into it and you do all that personal development and those things it's so easy to open up that channel of consciousness, higher wisdom, whatever that is that we all have access to, that you can then, you know, be your best self, that you can do the work. That's not just you doing some work. It's like literally it's consciousness itself coming through. That's how absolutely. I describe it anyway. Yeah, well, absolutely. And I've even had um, a couple of clients have brought me in um, spirit guide books and I've even got a set of divine animals oracle cards that mm. I tend to only use them myself when I'm looking through things but with the animal guide book that I've got the spirit guide and with animals I tend to see things I see visions mm. and it doesn't happen all the time it doesn't happen with everybody but generally when I go back to look up that animal it means something to them with what's written mm. and I don't I don't pick that it's sort of just it comes to me and then people they either take it on or it either means something to them or it doesn't and it doesn't yeah if it doesn't they can just let it go yeah and I think that's that that's that's another great thing about your approach Craig is that although you have access to all this stuff you're certainly not someone who pushes it on anyone do you know what I mean you're very good at just gauging where someone's at and and just giving them whatever it is that they're there for or need or, or whatever else which I think is a real talent because sometimes you know we can get so passionate about everything that we know and I'm the same I don't talk all spiritual stuff to all of my clients because some of them just aren't in that space um but when you know you just kind of get a sense when you when you have someone who's open to it and then they benefit which is really awesome so Craig 
I, I so I love I'm so excited to be speaking to you like I said like there's such depth and like talent that you've you know an experience that you've gained over the last few years like I said you've, you've all of the things with your massage and the craniofacial and the acupressure and the Reiki and, you know, the, your spiritual connections and the NLP and the timeline and the hypnosis and all those things that you've done all really combine into this very kind of magic mm. package that you you deliver for people. Um, but I, I would love to know because, like I said, I know sometimes um, when people are starting businesses or wanting to change careers or you know, step into something else that it can seem really daunting. So what do you think for you has been one of the most challenging things about starting a business and how have you dealt with it? I think for me, it was, I guess my my family owned a servo for years and a service station and I always saw business as something I'd never do. And I saw how hard it was, I, even with employers that I worked for, I saw how hard they worked and I saw how many hours they did. Then all of a sudden I'm in a business and it's learning how to do the bookwork side of things and learning how, you know, it's only been this year, you know, this is our 10th year in, in this place that we're in now. And it's, I've only just started doing my own bank state, reconciling my own bank statements. And it's, being able to have that courage to ask for help and ask for advice. And then when you get that advice, put it in writing or put it on your computer so that you've actually got a step-by-step -step process so that when you forget about it and you have to do it again in three months time, you can go back to that and say, oh, I've put that down. I've got my own steps here that I can follow my own wording to be able to work out what I did last time. And I think that was one of the, one of the things, and I guess the other thing is not don't fight it. Find yourself a coach that works for you. Because I know I fought it for years and well, maybe I should have done it years ago and got one of these coaches years ago. But it's I've actually I've been, I guess in the last oh, five or six years, I've actually had a lot of inner change. And some of that has been those limiting decisions and limiting beliefs I spoke of before not being good enough, not being worthy, who am I to stand up and say, you know, I'm a business owner. And But who am I not to stand up and say I'm a business owner? Because I am. The walls around me are proof that um, I'm in a position where people come in and I make them feel better than they, than they walked in when they walk out. And to be able to do that, it gives me the biggest joy. And so I'm working for myself instead of working for a boss. And it's a matter of working out. I'm not going to say I work less hours uh, for more money, but it's sometimes I actually, you know, there is times when I have bumper weeks and it's, you actually sit at the end of the week and think, wow, how many people did I help this week? Mm. And then that's a flow on effect because every person you've helped, it then can help somebody else. But it also brings back to that. You've had a bumper week. Where am I going to find time? to do the book work side of things I need to do. And that again, re brings me back to thinking of having your systems in place so that um, you're realistic about how long something is going to take and knowing that those with those systems, you're going to get quicker at it. Yeah. Very, very wise words, Craig. And um, I, and I think, you know, that it's, it's so true. Like I know that's one of the biggest issues that I work a lot with people on is that kind of almost imposter syndrome or confidence mm. in like, who, like who am mm. I to open my doors and have people come and pay me money or, you know, or say that I'm, I'm all this. And you've definitely worked through that and, and, you know, very much proven yourself as a successful business person. And, you know, I think, it's it's getting that thinking as well that you touched on <clears throat> that is essentially that when you have a business like and, and I I get like what you were saying about growing up around business thinking you never wanted to be in business because that's exactly what I thought my dad was in business um and he had like 24-hour tow trucks and all kinds of stuff and I was always like I there's no way in hell I'm going to be in business <laughs> I'm going to have a business um and I and obviously overcame that myself but it, it's 
you know, it's not just, oh yeah, I love massage and I love helping people. There's the whole business component to it, which like you said, having those systems, very good coach that gave you that advice, by the way, Craig. <laughs> we can very highly recommend it. Yeah. Um, having those systems so that you can repeat those um, tasks easily and with increasing speed and accuracy and even then be able to outsource them. Um, but I think, you know, it's even getting that mindset around understanding that the purpose of business is to make money. But it's not just making money because I mean, and I mean that from the sense of otherwise, if you're not making money, you've got a charity or a hobby, right? Yeah. So the purpose of business is making money. But the beauty of it, and I think why it's so, well, it's so important to realize, and you've just said this, is that it's the amount of money that you make is indicative of the amount of people that you've helped. Yeah. So also you're thinking about understanding your own worth. Yeah, yeah, that it's actually worth that. Um, absolutely, absolutely. So the more people you help, the more money you make, the more good you're doing in the world. And and I think yeah. that's the thing with business is that there's not another a lot of other vehicles that allow you to do that in a way that aligns with your own values and your own morals and you know your your own passions with how you want to serve people in the world so like yeah that's that's amazing if you can get if you can get over you can get your mindset aligned with the business side of it then yeah like you said you're not always just working like you know the four-hour work week or whatever that guy used to what was that book the four-hour work week oh his name's going to escape me right now but um it's like yeah that's you know a bit of a fantasy but you have that flexibility you know that you love what you're doing and you know control over that yeah yeah so what so what would you say well I mean that started off with the bit what's the most challenging but if you were to say what's the most rewarding oh rewarding for me is so many different levels um because it's like knowing that I've changed and be able to see like I even say to people if you had have asked me 12 years ago if I had a nail file and a whole manicure kit in my drawer yeah. I would have laughed at you now I've got a I've got a range that you know, it's not just chewing on my nails and using a pair of clippers. Um, to seeing my seeing my clients come out of a room, or you know, maybe hearing about what you've done for somebody. Like I have some clients that leave here and they don't really say very much, but then you you might hear them talking about you to somebody else, or they'll leave a review that just blows your mind. And it's just you've actually made you've had a you've had a big part of changing someone's life. Yeah. And if you didn't exist, like if I didn't exist here, would that, would they still get that result? And it gives me just such a buzz to know that everything I've done and everything I've learned over the years, I know that I'm, st um, I still believe I'm still growing. I'm definitely mm. not finished yet, but there is, there is times in my life that somebody just put up on Facebook today that good to see you finally got into networking as you said before, I'd never thought I'd ever do it. Talking on a podcast, never thought I'd ever do it. But oh, recording videos, possible. yeah. Recording videos, yeah. talking in front of a camera. Yeah, and you know, I just want to go back to a couple of things you said there, Craig. So if anyone's wondering, Craig has nail files because massage therapists need short nails. Like, <laughs> I, I, that might be apparent to some people, but, you know, if you've not had massages, you might think, why is Craig doing his nails relevant? because you don't want scratchy nails down your back, right? Um, so, you know, that's really... <laughs> Thank that's you for really clarifying good. that one. Yeah, but um, but like you said, you know, that all these things that you've been able to do because you've kept working on yourself, like because they, these are all the things that I work with people on as well, is that fear of visibility and showing up as the face of your business. But of course now, uh, and uh, which is probably a good segue because... You've recorded some amazing YouTube videos that help people do stretching yes. and different things. Yeah. Yeah. What I've done is I've actually taken, um, I do have a stretch sheet that I give to people after a treatment and a lot of them relate to what I physically do on the table. Now I've still got a couple more I have to put, have to actually record and put up, but there's a lot of the, a lot of it is actually what I do myself. Because I actually won't show somebody something unless I physically feel that it would work on me. And mm. there is different ways that people can do the same thing, which sometimes you need to do. 
but learning to give someone the ability to stretch over a rolled up towel in and instead of thinking about a bolster a rolled up a towel you'll get anywhere you you could go up to hamilton island and i'm sure there'd be towels up there where jasmine is um but all you need to do is look into your room with that you're staying in it's like oh i've got some towels i can roll up some towels and stretch and it's all about using what you have um golf balls are another one that i actually have i put up on youtube to actually put that into a sock and actually roll your foot across it it's in a sock so it doesn't roll away so you don't right. spend all your time chasing it not so it, you can start swinging it, it around or anything <laughs> oh no but if Could you do be have cats don't or recommend puppies, that yeah. yeah if you do have cats or puppies you might want to use that sock to hang it up so that they don't think it's a toy yeah and, I but it's it's all the things that i put up are ones that i use myself and i've I do have, I've just recorded a grounding, um, grounding meditation as well. That's going to be going up once I work out how to use audibly. So that's my next thing. Oh, amazing. Next well, and I, I'll put all the links. You're recording. I'll put all the links. Yeah. Amazing. I'll put all the links to your, your YouTube, um, those stretching the towel ones in the show notes, as well as all your links of how people can connect with you because, uh, and I know it's very easy to book in with you. You've got like an automated booking link and all that kind of stuff. So it's super easy. You can just go in there and see where is the time that works. But if you, you know, if there was something that you'd really like people to know about working with, you know, a holistic massage therapist, coach like yourself, that could help them make a really life-changing decision because let's face it, like you're living life inside this body, mind, everything else. What would what's the one thing that you'd like people to know that could really help them make that decision that could change their life? I think one really made a difference to my life was to learn how to breathe. Mm. And it's something so simple that we all have always done, but we don't know what we're doing. And yeah. it's just something we do. And when if you actually take the time to listen to your breath and you can if you find that your breath is getting really quick and really fast you you're generally finding that you're getting more and more highly strung which is not good for our bodies anyway mm. and so taking that fight and flight response out by slowing everything down slows down your breathing slows your blood pressure it makes everything clearer and you can actually take that inside i don't like using the word i think meditation gets thrown around a lot um, but it gives it gives you that opportunity to slow everything down so you can have a different view on what the world is doing and what you can see from your own eyes. Even by yeah. closing your eyes and breathing, you can see so much. Bring it back to the breath. You know, breath, breath work's been coming up a bit for me lately. And it was very interesting because on the weekend, I, um, I Googled resistance to breath work because I've noticed I've had a resistance to doing breath work. And yeah, I was like, what is there. this? What's that? I can help you out there. My Reiki instructors are also doing breath work, so I can help oh, you. Oh, okay, great. Well, when I Googled this resistance to breath work, and it was very interesting because what I read was that your body, if you've been, like, obviously I've done a lot of work on myself, but like, mm. you know, years ago when I started all this, I was, the fear was the big thing that I shifted and I've always been a very avoidant person and that kind of stuff. And I did this other mode, this other thing with a chiropractor, which was called, um, oh, what was it called? It's gone out of my mind because I wasn't thinking about it at the moment. It'll come back in a minute. Um, but he would just do this thing. And he said to me, he goes, oh, you've got a lot of armoring in the muscles over your heart area. And this was a few years ago, ago he told me this. And, uh, and I was doing some work to kind of release that, but this was what come up in the resistance to breath work was that if you've been like someone who's been in that kind of, especially that freeze and, you know, you kind of, your body creates this armoring and so it reduces your breathing and everything. And I guess that's like a fear response, isn't it? Like you see like little mouse or something, really? it's just like all just like not trying to move and it's certainly not doing big breaths and that creates this armoring. And so resistance to breath work can actually be the body not wanting to let go of this kind of, you know, control or whatever else. And I'm like, oh, that's what it, that's what it's been with me. And I think since I've, I realized that, I think there's been a shift in me because like, I know I've got rid of a lot of that fear and I did do some breath work not that long ago. Um, but 
Yeah, it's really, it's super fascinating what the body does and how it responds and, and you know, things like that. Yeah. I like to call them aha moments. Mm, yes. Aha. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Well, Craig, it's been such a delight. We, I'm sure we could just chat on all day. Um, but like I said, we're, it, all good things have to come to an end. And like I was saying before, I'll pop all the links to how people can connect with you, those YouTube clips and things like that in the show notes. So just go to the show notes from this episode and you'll be able to see all of those. Um, but the question that I, I do love to ask people, because, you know, especially as business owners, sometimes, you know, business can become our life. And we say, this is the most fun thing that I ever do. Like I love podcasting and all those kinds of things. But what do you do for fun outside of your business, Craig? Oh, um, just I try and spend some time with my family when I can, uh, doing stuff at home that I don't get a chance to do here. But I'm also a Freemason. I have also, I've been a Freemason since I was 18. So it's quite a long time. So yeah, that wow. gives me a different different perspective. I've got a lot of, a lot of people in my life that are a lot older than I am that give me guidance. And it's, it's, it's a, it's been good for me over the years to keep me keep me stable and on the straight and narrow. Yeah, it's very fascinating. That's another whole conversation in itself. I think my I grandfather think was be. a Freemason. Um, yep. I don't know. All I knew is I had funny handshakes or something. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> you have to watch the video if you're listening to get what just happened then. But um, Craig <laughs> Collins-Wells, thank you so much for your time and being a guest on the Coaching Circle podcast. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been great to be on here and I appreciate the opportunity. So I look forward to watching it back. Yeah. <laughs>